third party content has been copied and communicated pursuant to Part 5A or 5B of the Copyright Act, unless indicated otherwise. Hi everybody, my name is Dr Rachel Haynes Wesson. I'm the lecturer in blended learning for the faculty and today I'm going to be talking about science communication skill development for the School of Life Environmental Science. Now we've already as a team created a science communication skill development resource and this video just complements what's inside this resource uh, to help those teachers who might not have enough time to read the PDF um, resource about science communication skills for our students and or for those who want to have a quick um, summary of what's available in that resource. So far we've had a lot of teachers using this resource and it's been a great conversation starter as well as igniting the imagination when it comes to reimagining assessment practices around communication which is a GLO for Deakin. So one of the important questions to ask is what do you want your students to be able to do when they graduate regarding science communication skills? And communication skills comes in many forms and sizes. So there's the interpersonal, um, there's, um, there's also text, so written documents, how to write, how to communicate. There's also visually and through diagrams or data. So there's, there's a variety of ways of being able to communicate science. And our students these days need to know these variety of ways of doing it. We need to get past just doing reports, written reports. Uh, however, they, they are still important. This is also an area that's of great import, importance for the science threshold learning. And they have specifically stated what they would like graduates to be able to achieve in in science when it comes to communication. And I'm not going to go running through this uh, word for word as you can read it here and it's also explicit in the resource as well. I think what's really important when we're teaching and assessing communication skills for science students is to keep in mind that not all students will enter a research area for science. It's actually quite a low percentage that will do that and become a science professional. Uh, it's important to understand the content that's being delivered and what the purpose is of the communication and as well as what types of methods will this communication take place as well as the audience. The audience is really important because it's not always going to be a science audience. It could be industry, it could be government, it could be the layperson and how do we communicate effectively? How do we teach and assess students to develop their skills so they can communicate science effectively to a broad range of audiences? And this can happen in peers, with peers amongst each other, um, sharing communication, improving communication. It, it might be uh, a communicating through technology, science, topics and research interests and that could be done through a group communicating to a wider audience and as I said that can also incorporate into general public or experts in science as well as being cross-disciplinary as well. So they're just some of the things we need to keep in mind. And here I just have a quick list of the different types of communication modes or methods as I quickly went over before and there's many ways to be able to get your students to use technology and uh, integrate technology into the face-to-face -face or into the online environment or the blended learning environment when it comes to communica communicating science effectively and using a variety of modes and ways of doing that. And the resource goes into more detail and gives examples of these. So if you are interested, I really recommend you having a look at the resource. And here I've just put some important websites that I found that might inspire you in your, in your learning and teaching endeavour when it comes to communication skills for science students. And these websites are very inspiring because they have great examples and you can pick and choose what you'd like to do here. So some teachers are actually starting to look at video and using that as a group activity in how they communicate science to a wider audience, so to the, to the lay person or to the general public and how video can actually enhance that communication skills. 
blogs is also another example. A lot of a lot of teachers are starting to look into this area. It's a great, it's effective, and it's instant way of communicating to a wider audience beyond just the expertise or the experts in science. Um, there's plenty of examples in the resource of blogs that you can get examples from for your own teaching practice. And that's it for this particular video. My next video will be looking at content to cloud for laboratory learning. And I've just put a little sneak preview here. And so that will be in part two. Thank you for watching and I wish you all the best with your teaching and learning experience when it comes to communicating with students on how, the, how there is diverse ways of using technology and different forms of communication for their skill development in this area.